Well, um, what I would like to talk to you about a little bit is uh, the concept of how uh, the finance uh, courses are taught at Thomas More now. Um, and we're utilizing a concept, something called what is a flipped class or a flipped class concept. So essentially what we're going to talk here a little bit, I'm going to basically introduce three uh, discussion points here. We're going to talk a little bit about the philosophy of this class, a little bit about student responsibility, and then also address uh, faculty responsibilities. So let's uh, first talk about philosophically what goes on in this class. Uh, the concept of this flipped classroom has uh, several objectives. Um, essentially, the way the class is taught is it's taught backwards. Uh, traditionally, what you're probably used to is a, an instructor uh, comes in and they lecture, um, possibly give you exams during class, etc. And then when you go home, you work on projects, uh, homework, um, tasks that they assign for evaluation. Well, what we're going to do here is we're going to flip thought that as much as we possibly can. So the process is that you will, uh, we'll talk about this in student responsibilities, but you're going to see the lectures at home via video, and in class, we're going to discuss the materials, etc. So the concept has, again, several objectives. It provides actually a means for different types of learning. Um, you have the ability to watch a video uh, as many times as you need to. You'll have the opportunity to ask questions in class, uh, participate in discussion, and add uh, some meaningful dialogue into the classroom itself. Um, and in addition, we're going to take really the hardest part of finance, which is the problem-solving piece, and take it out of the homework and bring it into the classroom. So that obviously is a different uh, format, if you will, of how you might be used to taking classes um, traditionally. So what is it that the student needs to do for this class or as part of this class? Well, we're, there's several things we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about your preparation, participation, the quizzes and evaluations, the homework, research, any group activities. So class preparation. Again, prior to each class, uh, you're going to have to prepare for the course. So what that means is you're going to have to watch all the videos for the chapter coverage. And of course, that implies, obviously, that you're going to read the materials. There is a Word document that I'll show you here in a couple of minutes that uh, where you can take notes. In fact, let's go out there. We're going to go out to the um, Weebly site. Right? If you go out to this Weebly site and you pick a class that's flipped, the UA321 is a flipped classroom. And if you scroll down here a ways, you'll start to see some files. For Chapter 1, the very first file here says it's the class video notes. This is the video that you're going to watch prior to coming to class. These notes replicate the materials that's in this video. So while you're watching the video, you should open this file and uh, follow along, take notes, uh, jot down questions that you might have, etc. But in general, you're going to get the lecture and take notes at home. Go back to the document again. Again, we talked about taking notes. There is a study guide. All you're going to do is review this study guide. If I scroll down a little bit further... Um, it's, it's actually right here. Here's the chapter one study guide. If you were to open that study guide, I guess I can go back and actually open these. Here is the video notes. And if you open the notes, if you look at them, they'll see they're, they're pretty intense. They actually follow slide by slide the instruction for the course. So everything is here. You can take notes, do whatever you want to do. Uh, you could do this uh, in a review mode, so you could put notes and attach things, uh, point to uh, things that you want more information about. Those, that's the notes section. So let me go ahead and kind of get rid of that piece. The other piece, again, that we're talking about right now is the study guide. At home, I'd like you to review this and keep in mind what the, the questions are here. Try to think about how you might answer these questions. 
So there's a, obviously a variety of questions we're going to talk about. And this is the discussion. Now what you're going to do in class is we're going to complete this and fill it out. So as part of an assignment, you're going to return the completed document to me. Um, I actually think in class it would probably be best if you were using a, uh, an electronic device so you could type cut and paste as needed, but this is the format or how the study guide is going to ultimately going to be completed and that's going to obviously be completed during class time. So let's kind of go back to our picture again, our, our thing. So we talked about that You're, before you come to class. Again, one way or another, you have to download the study guide and a financial spreadsheet. Again, this financial spreadsheet is provided in the Weebly site. If you go here, here's finance spreadsheet. You're just going to download, as it takes a second or two to work, you're going to download this spreadsheet so that you can use it during class time. Not real sure why it's not, but anyhow, when you go to this, there it is. Here it is. It says 1314 revision. Um, and I might add, you know, this thing does get revised every once in a while. Uh, when that revision comes about, I'll obviously come out here and change it, inform you, and then you can then likewise come out and get the updated version. So that's your responsibility prior to the class. So once you get to class, obviously you should bring a laptop or some kind of electronic device um, so that, uh, you know, essentially we're going to start working some quantitative problems and it's going to make the problem solving obviously a lot more effective and a little bit easier for you to follow the class if you have a device that you can copy, paste, etc. Um, at the very least, you need to bring a hard copy of the study guide uh, for the chapters that you're going to cover in that course or in that that class. Um, finally, the last part here really is a critical component to this course is you have to uh, participate in discussion. Um, we're going to talk about this. We're going to be asking you to provide us with answers. The answers you have come from primarily from the textbook and the videos that you watch, but also a lot of them come from uh, just uh, current events and, and things that could be happening at your work or, or some experiential thing that you've uh, gone through in your, in your life. So in the end, if, if the class doesn't participate, the instructor will randomly call on students. Participation is graded. Um, I mean, I work under the assumption that everybody gets 100% of participation and it's when I start to recognize that you're not participating that I start to take away points. So, uh, again, it's your responsibility to let the instructor know that you're participating, that, that, that you're involved in the class. And how you do that by, is obviously by physically participating in the class time. Quizzes and examinations are done online. Uh, uh, most of the classes that we have are going to have a, a learning management system. Um, some of them come with the textbook and some of them we may use Thomas More's learning management system. But they have an online uh, function uh, that you'll be able to answer these questions uh, out there. So uh, you're going to be given instructions on how the process works, how to sign up for this learning management system. Each chapter has a quiz that's timed. And you can only take the quiz one time. Um, if you have questions as the time comes along, obviously the instructor can address uh, more uh, personal kinds of questions as, as we go along. Homework could either be online or offline. The online assignments are obviously each chapter, um, most chapters, let's put it that way, have uh, online assignments. These assignments can be attempted twice. The, the, the learning management system that we ultimately use for this is something called My Finance Lab. So when you go out here and you want to look at assignments, 
or you can click on here you can do some homework if you go to the homework thing again, it takes a second here to load up and you can just start to work on the assignments that you have here's chapter one's homework if you click on that you can then what click on the question answer the questions they're all multiple choice um, they are algorithmically oriented so that means everybody in the class gets the same question but everybody's going to have different answers because the numbers and the variables are different so again you answer know, this one has four questions uh, and you'll just complete those and and you can go through now this uh, it says the number of times you can complete each question is six that's obviously wrong i have to fix that but it'll tell you how you can work with this uh particular uh assignment likewise to take a quiz you do the exact same thing open the quiz and you take the quiz again as we get closer to the assignments the instructor can give you more information on on how to do this now the offline assignments are again downloaded and completed they come from the website so if we go back to the Weebly website if we go down here a little bit we'll find right here's some uh, oops I'm sorry I'm in the wrong I'm in the wrong place I need to go back to 321 now let's scroll down here a little bit and what you'll find down here Again, here's a, in chapter one, there's actually more videos. There's actually two videos on ethics that you need to look at. But here's the offline assignment. Again, you'll download that. And essentially, this is what it looks like. In this case, it's only research. Uh, in other chapters, it'll say research with the points for the research. And then it will say homework with the points for the homework. Again, this is uh, information. You just answer these questions. And obviously, you save that, and you're going to email that uh, back to the instructor. So hopefully, this isn't too complicated. Once you get into the group of things, it, it runs actually fairly smoothly. One of the things that I want us to be aware of, and one of the things I want you to, to concentrate on and, and think about is, you know, how am I, as the instructor, how am I supposed to know that... Um, the assignment is your assignment. When you download an assignment for, for this class, this is what it's going to look like. It's going to look like BUA 321, Chapter 1, Offline Assignment. That's what the file looks like. You need to um, rename that assignment. So how are you going to do that? You're going to, um, when you go File, Save As, you'll replace here with your last name so I'll put my last name there and then you're going to put your section each class obviously has a section uh, T3 is a T stands for Crestview Hills obviously that makes sense but it's a class in Crestview Hills the section number is three and then leave the rest of it there and you need to complete this and fulfill this every single time the exact same way because I archive this information and we need to file it uh, alphabetically. So every time you come up, obviously the chapter one turns to chapter two, etc. So hopefully that's not uh, too confusing, but that's how you ultimately need to get me um, your email. The instructor is going to provide you with their email once we uh, get to obviously the instructors or the faculty's responsibilities. Each chapter, not each chapter, most chapters have some form of research that's done. Uh, it could be done either online or it could be done on hard copy. Uh, essentially what I mean by that is you could be asked maybe to go to the library and look something up. That's hard copy. Or you could be doing the research uh, via the internet. Uh, most of this research is all done online uh, via the internet. Um, you get, you get a document. We looked at that document. You're going to follow those guidelines. And then you're obviously going to email this to the instructor using that renaming protocol. Again, if, you, if I receive documents that are not named correctly, I'm just going to send them back. I'm not going to grade them. I'm not even going to look at them. I'm just going to return them to you. So you obviously want to get them back to me or get them to me correctly the first time. 
Some classes have group activities. Um, they could be assigned uh, depending on the course itself, or they could be related to some chapter. The activities are obviously are completed as a group within the group meeting time. And again, any of the documents that uh, are, are evidence of you completing the assignment are ultimately emailed, and they're obviously remailed according to the protocol. Now, if it's a group activity, you need to, instead of the last name, you need to put the name of the group. So instead of Byerly being the very first word of the name, you might put uh, Class Titans as your group name. That's what will be, and then you'll email that to me. Again, the process here, or the idea, is to enable me to, um, I'm trying to, to get a file here so I can kind of show you how I do this and why it's so important. If I go back to my Dropbox account, again, here's, this is a class that, uh, this is a class that I'm working on right here. You can see I have everybody's name, the assignments are listed. So I know if you tell me, ooh, I didn't get, uh, I didn't get a grade for chapter three. And I look and say, well, I graded it. I'm obviously, maybe I didn't send it back to you or I just forgot to put it in the grade book. I can go to this and I can uh, find the answers, uh, the, the grade. And then obviously I can input that into the grade book. The final couple slides here just talks really about the faculty's responsibilities to get this class running and to run smoothly. Again, the, the learning management system will grade the online quizzes and homeworks. Instructors grade the offline assignments, and we're going to do that as soon as possible. Um, the instructors are going to be able to assign due dates for all the assignments. The standard due date, uh, in particular, obviously, for the online assignments, is the standard due date is midnight, the night before the next class. The reason for this is, is we don't allow you to review the questions until after everybody has completed the quiz. Um, this allows you to go out and check out the questions, see what you missed, maybe ask questions of the professor. When you take the test, as soon as you're done with the test, you will know your grade. It's published right then. The challenge is you don't get to review until a later date. So again, if your class meets on Tuesday evenings, all assignments are due completed by midnight on Monday. That gives the instructor time to get those uh, um, um, assignments graded and get them back to you. Now, if it's an adjunct, uh, you might want that you would give them uh, for the offline assignments. We'd like to give them maybe another day till Wednesday to ultimately have them completed and back to you. But quite frankly, you shouldn't have to wait more than a day or two to get uh, or, or from the uh, when the classes when the assignments were due you shouldn't have to wait more than a class or two or a day or two to get the assignments turned back to you again instructors will address any issues within the classroom right you're going to give you an email that you're going to be able to use and communicate with them um, uh, one of the things that I like to say is that you know email is not uh, an instant message system um, I would give 24 hours, certainly within 24 hours, an instructor should be able to get back to you, at least respond and say, hey, I got your message, I'm busy, uh, I'll get back to you in another day. But you need to have that, instructors are informed that they have to have this method of communication for this system to work, and uh, uh, I, as a content coordinator, as a person that's running the finance uh, courses, um, I expect that of my adjuncts, and if they're not doing that, then uh, we have to figure out uh, some uh, some way to to help them get uh, get back to you and provide you with information a little bit quicker. Grades themselves are due to the registrar within seven days of the last class. The final grade is determined strictly from the grading within the learning management system or if we're using an Excel program, it comes right from there. According to college policies, grades cannot be held for incomplete work. So what will happen is the day that I have to turn in grades, I'm going to look at all the things that have been turned in. Anything that is not there, I'm going to convert to a zero, and that will be your grade for the course. 
So obviously any missing assignments are going to have a great impact on the final grade uh, for you in the class. Um, I know this is kind of a lot. It's, it's, it's really not information, obviously, about the courses in general. But I want you to have a picture and an understanding about the general utilization of this methodology. Hopefully this leads to um, greater understanding of financial issues and problems and it helps us um, understand the way businesses should be working. Uh, again, if you have uh, questions, you can obviously email me through the uh, Thomas More email system. Look forward to uh, seeing you in class.